Common names for these insects include walking sticks, stick bugs, and leaf insects, just to name a few. Formally, they're classified as the family Phasmatidae, under the order Orthoptera, which include grasshoppers, crickets, katydids, and locusts. However, they're now classified as their own order, that of Phasmatodia. There have been about 3,000 species of phasmatids identified around the world. They occur most commonly in the tropics, where they're notably larger. There are a few species which occur within the United States, reaching about 6 inches in the south, but most are about 2 inches in length. Tropical species can grow to great lengths very great. The largest insects in the world are the females of the genus Phobeticus, which can reach lengths of up to 33 centimeters. The basic morphology of a phasmatid includes a long slender body, which is either flattened or cylindrical. The abdomen contains 11 segments. The head is somewhat bulbous, with protruding, chewing mandibles. They have long antenna and legs. They also have compound eyes, yet ocelli occur only rarely, and only in males. Some species are wingless, while others are not. The wingless species tend to have a smaller thorax, as they do not need to make space for wing muscles. And of course, the most striking feature of the phasmatids is their stunning camouflage. Phasmatids are herbivorous insects. Each species is unique to a certain host plant. This has produced a large variety of body plans and colors and external morphologies, evolved specifically for blending in with the host plant. This impressive and extensive camouflage has been taken so far that the eggs of each species resemble the seeds of their respective host plants. This specificity makes keeping phasmatids as pets very easy. There's more of an issue in caring for their host plant than there is in directly caring for the stick insect. About 300 species have been successfully kept in captivity as pets and on exhibit. Only humans want to keep phasmatids as pets. To most organisms, they look like a tasty treat. To take their camouflage one step further, they perform this rocking motion. It is hypothesized that this behavior is used to make the insect look more like a blowing twig or a blowing leaf to blend in better with its environment. However, if a predator, or in this case, a cameraman, gets too close, they freeze so that their outline isn't compromised by their movement. The nymphs also exhibit this rocking behavior. The life cycle begins with the egg, which are laid in clutches of between 100 and 1200, which are attached to twigs, under leaves, or on the ground. The eggs lay dormant for up to several months. Being hemimetabolous, the nymphs, once born, look like miniature adults. The number of molts to reach adulthood depends upon the species. Reaching maturity can take up to a few months. Again, this amount of time depends upon the species. Once sexual maturity is reached as an adult, 
individuals can mate. Fertilization occurs internally. Seen here, the smaller individual is the male. This is an example of sexual dimorphism, which is not uncommon among phasmatids. Fertilization allows for the production of both male and female eggs. However, females are capable of parthenogenesis. This is reproduction without mating. When parthenogenesis occurs, the female phasmatids lay only female eggs. The beauty and exotic allure of these creatures is astounding. This makes them not only fascinating pets, but popular topics of study. This is fortunate for some species, such as the Lord Howe Island Phasmid. There's a great deal of effort being put into saving this creature, as it has been considered extinct since a 1918 shipwreck introduced rats to Lord Howe Island. However, in 2001, three live specimens were discovered, sparking the current conservation efforts, which appear successful. I hope you have enjoyed and learned from this presentation on the insect order Phasmatodia.